have it from now and transcription. Yes, thank you. So again, welcome to everyone who's just joined us on this meeting and thank you for coming. Um, if uh, the people who have their uh, microphones on, if you could also use a uh, headphone, then we won't hear uh, feedback on your speakers. Great. I'm Matt Up. Uh, I will be hosting the session today and I am joined by my colleagues uh, Shashruth and Sebastian and also Mario and uh, Pranati and uh, Sebastian and um, uh, Shashruth will be answering most of your questions. Uh, Pranati and Mario are keeping an eye on uh, the lobby, admitting people in and looking at the questions you might be typing in the chat. Uh, this session will be recorded and also uploaded on YouTube. So um, please have that in mind if you would like to turn on your camera and ask your questions um, face to face in person. Um, so just know that we are recording it. Uh, but if not, you can also type your question in the chat and feel free to ask what you would like to know about living in Delft, living in Netherlands. Um, I think from this group, uh, Sebastian, are you back? Are you back in Netherlands? Yes, uh, I'm back in Netherlands. I came here like one week ago. <laughs> okay, so yeah. from this group, uh, four of you, the four of you uh, all live in Delft. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I yes. live in Rotterdam, so <laughs> uh, you can also ask uh, ask me Rotterdam related questions. Uh, but the rest of the team lives in Delft. In fact, uh, Mario, our uh, team leader and boss and manager, uh, she was also born in Delft. So she knows a lot about the history of uh, the city you will be living in uh, in a couple of weeks, I think, or uh, majority of people might be arriving next week, in fact. So it's very exciting. Uh, Shashrut and Sebastian, would you like to introduce yourselves a little bit? Talk about yourself, talk about how long you've been in the Netherlands, what you're studying? OK, um, I kind of start, I think. Yeah. Um, so my name is Sebastian. I was uh, born in Chile, but lived for well, most of my life in Peru. And I came to the Netherlands around four to five years ago to study my bachelor in aerospace engineering. And now I'm doing the master's in space exploration, currently in the thesis space. And uh, how long have you been part of the introduction program team? <laughs> four <laughs> years ago, something three years ago, okay. around, around that time, I think. Yeah. And did you start as a team member or were you also a coach before that? No, I started directly as a team member. Um, it was a, a nice experience. I also started doing spring about 2019. Yeah, mm, 2019. Okay. <laughs> for those of you who might not be familiar, during the introduction program uh, for the students, um, we actually divide people into different teams. And uh, each team has a coach who is a, a current uh, student of the TU Delft, and they kind of guide you through the tour of the campus and also talk about their experiences and uh, try to make uh, people more comfortable uh, because, of course, it's uh, quite a change to also then be uh, dropped into a team of strangers and uh, the environment is strange, the people are strange. So uh, it kind of helps to have a peer and a potential friend uh, show you around. So that's what uh, we mean by coach. Uh, it's not necessarily sport. -related. <laughs> I was actually corrected by uh, someone, I, I think a native English speaker, who were like, why are you using the word coach? It's not, this is not a sport. <laughs> I was like, mm. <laughs> but one could argue <laughs> living in a different country <laughs> is quite a... <laughs> you know, a sport in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zubesi. And uh, Shashrut, go ahead. Um, hi, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm Shashrut. Uh, I actually started with Sebastian, like we both started our bachelor's together and now I'm in my master's as well. I started this year, so I'm doing a control and simulation master's track in aerospace engineering. And uh, unlike Sebastian, this is my first year doing the IP thing, so this is my second IP. 
And before I joined the crew, I was a coach in 2019. So yeah, that wraps it up. Yeah. So which one was your favorite, being a coach or being a crew member? Crew. Like crew member? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's much nicer if you feel more in control. And it's, I, I at least, you know, like organizing more than actually participating. <laughs> So um, both of you, do you live in a student housing or do you have like um, a private uh, housing or like a room you share with other students? Uh, what is your living situation? Uh, so I rent a house with uh, three other friends, mm -hmm. also friends from the Bachelor of Aerospace. <laughs> we, we all met over there, you know, yeah, you, you make your own group of friends and then you get together to rent a house. Mm -hmm. Some people left, other people come in. But yeah, well, uh, we did that and I'm living there since um, uh, 2018, actually. Well, okay. here. <laughs> and did you manage to actually rent a house together before you arrived uh, in Delft? Or was it something, did you have like a temporary housing before that? How did that go? Uh, I had a temporary housing before that uh, um, and offered by the university. Mm -hmm. Although the university got in contact with uh, Duo and Duo, which is a housing agency, offered um, well offered uh, many apartments and then I, there I rent one for one year, and then I couldn't renew it, so I, I rented an apartment with uh, other friends. Mm -hmm. What about you, Shashri? Um, in my first year, like Sebastian, I got it through Duo. So there was this program where you pay like, I don't know, a hundred something and then they give you a list of accommodation that you can pick for a year. That time I shared a flat with like three, you know, two other guys. Mm -hmm. In my second year, I actually struggled to find a place. Yeah. yeah, it was really hard finding a place by myself. And then technically I was homeless for two weeks at the beginning oh. of second year. It's just, uh, yeah, through a, like a mutual friend of ours, like, one of his roommates left, so he asked me if I wanted the room and I took it. And currently I live in a studio. Again, mm -hmm. Dior is, you can, what is it? Ideally, before you join TUW, you sign up on room.nl. Mm -hmm. And then you have a list of studios that you can apply for. You know, um, so yeah, based on your ranking, you get it or you don't. You keep trying it for a couple of years and that's how I got the studio. And this mm -hmm. is my second year here. I don't think I'm going to move out until I finish, like I'm done with you, Delft. And uh, uh, if uh, Mario or Pranati could uh, put the link of uh, Duo in the chat, then uh, people can also take a look if you still don't have housing. And one thing we would like to emphasize with the team is that uh, you need to watch out for um, scams, especially when it comes to housing. Um, don't exchange any uh, money before you've actually physically have seen the house or signed a contract uh, and uh, just be careful uh, be a bit more vigilant about uh, you know the agencies that you want to go to and uh, if you want to uh, get private housing because uh, uh, it's a bit of an issue uh, with the students getting sam scammed so we don't want you to uh, go through that also, it's quite um, stressful just a reminder uh there's nothing known as registration fees. My second landlord actually asked, like he charged me like 350 euros for registration fees, you know, for signing up, you know, making the contract and stuff. Uh, later through a lawyer, I found out it, like a landlord can't charge you registration fees. No, there is so, no such a thing as registration fees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so if someone asks thing. you for stuff like that, uh, yeah. You can there might be that's... there might be a deposit, uh, but what a deposit is is uh, a lump sum of money that you pay at the beginning uh, before you um, start uh, becoming a tenant, and at the end of your contract when you are leaving the house, uh, if the house is in a good situation, then you should be given your deposit back. So uh, there is no such a thing as a registration fee. Uh, but there might be some deposit and uh, you should be able to, uh, in majority of circumstances, you should be able to ask for your deposit back. Yeah. And um, so what were some of the things uh, that you think people should buy uh, for their house first? Like, what are some of the things like pillows, blankets, what are oh. we talking about? Um, yeah, uh, I remember that before I, I got a place in Duo, I came mm -hmm. here a couple of days ago just to buy the important things before mm -hmm. moving there. Um, so I remember I bought like pants, um, all the coterie that I needed, um, these kind of things. 
if I if remember correctly, Duo gives you the blanket, um, yeah, the blankets and these kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I would go for the uh, things to eat, basically. <laughs> Food. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and there is usually a small fridge, uh, at least in the duo apartments. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yes, it's correct. Oh, I, I, I would advise also uh, students to buy these pans that are um, that can handle the inductive uh, stoves, mm. because duo usually has those type of stoves. Mm. You're talking about the difference between the gas stoves and the electric stoves. Yes, but between electrics, there are ones that uh, work. Uh, with different mechanisms. There is mm. one inductive, which uh, some pants are special for that, and some pants don't work on that. With that. Um, uh, there was a question in the chat uh, regarding registering your address at a municipality after arriving in the Netherlands. Uh, they are asking if they should book an appointment or should they be able to just go without one? And uh, the answer is that you should definitely book an appointment, uh, especially now uh, with the um, even before that, you always have to book an appointment, uh, but even with Corona, uh, they don't admit anyone uh, at the door. So uh, you can easily make an appointment uh, online. You can uh, visit the Delft Municipality website and make an appointment. And usually the appointments come by fast. Um, the rule is that you should have an appointment in order to register within the two weeks of your arrival uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, my colleague also posted the registration link for uh, people who will be living in Delft. But the procedure is the same in every city. Basically, you have to make an appointment at the municipality and uh, go and register the address that you are currently uh, staying at. And for people who might not immediately have an address, um, you can also uh, still make the appointment. So you have that and then um, search for a more permanent uh, uh, residence. Also, um, just to be safe uh, when you're looking for accommodation, if it's not through Duo, just make sure you can actually register. Because a lot of times when you see people renting out, let's say, studios or rooms, they do mention that you cannot register because they're already registered. And especially yeah. if you're getting, let's say, housing allowances or setting up a bank account and stuff like that, you need to have a registered address. Otherwise, you might run into issues later on. Yeah. So, yeah, so just, um, basically, if uh, if someone tells you that you cannot register at an address uh, that you want to be renting, it means they are not really uh, renting it to you legally because you should be able to. You know, there's a certain amount of people who are allowed to live at a, one address. And um, it, if they tell you you can't register in that address, it means they are uh, subletting it to you uh, illegally. So don't go for that because you do need an address. You need it for um, your uh, tax purposes and for paying your bills and for having a, a bank account. So pay attention to that. There was also a question on Instagram about uh, the dorms uh, that Duo offers, whether they are co-ed or uh, they are um, separated by gender. And uh, I'm not so sure about that. If someone knows, uh, please let me know. The co-ed. They're co-ed, okay. But uh, everyone has their own separate rooms. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Okay. You have shared uh, facilities. So like depending on the kind of place you live in, you probably share it, let's say, amongst, your, at least as far as I know, in your stitches, like where I live, you have a shared accommodation where you share a kitchen mm -hmm. and I think two bathrooms amongst eight people. Yeah. But each of you have your own room. And sometimes, I'm not sure, but like I think sometimes you even have a small fridge in your own room. I think Pranati wants to say something. Yes, go ahead, Pranati. I live in one of those dorms, so yeah. Um, it's usually co-ed in terms of if you have your own private bathroom. Mm -hmm. But in case there are houses in other places in Delft where they even share a bathroom. And in that case, usually Duo makes sure that um, girls are usually with girls and guys are usually with guys so that nobody has to feel uncomfortable. But that's if they go through the university housing and not through the uh, Duo system itself. Mm -hmm. So if the bathrooms are shared, they're usually uh, separated. Uh, if not, uh, the rest of it is co-ed. Yeah. OK. So um, in terms of transportation, let's uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, so how do you get around uh, in Delft and also generally in mm -hmm. Netherlands? Well, um, in my case, it's just bike in Delft, generally. 
And if I have to go to Rotterdam or the Hague, depending on the day, if it's sunny, maybe I, I will go by bike. If it's not sunny, I will prefer tram or train or, well, uh, or metro sometimes, well, in Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not all of the cities in Netherlands have a uh, metro. Uh, some of them have tram, uh, uh, cities like Amsterdam and Rotterdam and uh, Den Haag and uh, Utrecht and Leiden. I think uh, Leiden might have tram, but uh, some of the bigger cities uh, have metro, but some of the other ones have tram, which are uh, above the ground. And uh, all of them have buses, uh, and uh, all of them are reachable through um, uh, public transport by train and bus. Uh, and I actually have never met anyone who takes taxi because it's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's an emergency and, you know, the tr public transport is not running uh, or it's very late at night uh, for short distances. But uh, I haven't, I have never, you know, seen anyone who takes taxis. And um, most people have bikes too. Um, you might think Delft is a relatively a small city and you think, oh, I can get around, you know, by walking. Um, but uh, it gets tiring quite easily. And also you don't want to uh, keep uh, hollering around uh, groceries on your back. So uh, having a cheap bike actually helps a lot. And there are a lot of services where you can um, rent bikes. So there's a question about, uh, do we have any tips for education itself? Like for exams, lectures uh, you want to share? Do you have any tips, uh, Sebastian and Uh Well, I think the usual, like try to study in advance and well, do what works best for you. Like for example, for me, it's just, well, studying, studying, going to the library, going to some study places where I don't have any distractions. Uh, get together with a group of friends who are doing the same exam so I can share opinions, share uh, answers for problems, uh, you know, these kind of things. Mm. And did you have to do any of the exams online uh, in the past uh, quarters or this year or last year? Yes, uh, mainly last year. And well, it's usually they are either online proctor or not. Most of them, mm -hmm. I think, are which means that um, you have to turn on your camera, your microphone, you have to do a room scan. Um, I mean, I personally, I didn't find it really uh, a hassle or a problem, but some people well, might do. Um, uh, but yeah, well, those for those exams, I had to study at my place. And yeah. I also usually would be in a Zoom call with some friends to yeah you know have some company at least while you're studying mm -hmm. and also to ask some questions about the topics now it's actually possible again to go to the campus we uh, we were in the lockdown until um uh, 14th of january but after that now the lockdown has kind of lifted uh, there are still regulations. You have to wear first a face mask, and also it is recommended that we wear um, the medical masks and uh, not the reusable um, uh, fabric ones. So keep that in mind if you're uh, coming to the campus for a visit that uh, you should wear a face mask and also follow the one and a half meters distance. But it is once again possible to study at the campus and in the library and in the study spaces uh, in your faculty. Uh, different faculties might have slightly different rules. Uh, so make sure to uh, check uh, on your faculty's website. And also if you have questions, you can always contact your faculty's uh, service desk and you can find their emails also on the website of TU Delft. Shashrut, what are your uh, top tips for nailing those exams? <laughs> okay, I, I, I Getting all the tens. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd recommend doing what Sebastian does. I don't think what I do should be advice to others. I'm like, yeah, him, but that I could also be helpful. What have you done that hasn't served you? You can also share that, you know. Okay, no, uh, I... Like uh, over the past year, I made myself like a nice study space at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, personally, I have a really short attention span. So I, you know, instead of keeping one thing to, you know, for me to study the whole day, I usually split it up. So I, you know, study for let's say half an hour, 15 minutes even sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do something small to the side and switch back to studying. Um, the nice thing, at least that came 
from Corona, like the whole COVID situation was a lot of lectures were recorded. Mm. So at least in my faculty, a lot of um, professors you know, spent extra time and made really nice short videos explaining topics. So I do attend, uh, like I do attend lectures, like, you know, when they do occur, but then um, before exams, I like revising really quick. So I like right now I'm actually watching most of the lectures for a course, like at least the mm. videos, the short ones. And um, you usually also have past papers. So unlike there's a major, unless, or unless there's a major overhaul of the, like say the course itself, the next, you know, the exams are pretty similar. So at least, you know, two, three days before the exam, just have a look at the past paper. So you have a rough idea of what it's going to be like. Yeah. And um, yeah, with online exams, it's been different. Like some of them got restructured for me and just make sure you at least have a spare laptop because I have had a whole set of different experiences with online exams. So make sure you have a spare laptop just in case something goes wrong. Make sure you have a good Wi-Fi connection because yeah. if it drops out, you might be kicked out of the exam and getting back into the exam is a whole hassle with, you know, which involves you screaming at the screen and then trying to send emails and trying to, like, you know, waiting for a response, which you might lose time at. Mm. But um, also just in general, you, like you can follow the course, the way it's structured, you know, do these courses this time. But um, I'd, I personally recommend going to the study guide and having a look and seeing, you know, how many courses you can actually realistically do and then mm. plan ahead first before, you know, instead of cramming everything in last minute. Yeah. So my only advice would be plan in the head, like yeah, ahead. Yeah, I think it is uh, a bit easy. Uh, uh, might actually happen to uh, exchange students that you you're kind of excited and your time is also limited, and you want to take a lot of uh, lectures and courses. But I would really suggest uh, first of all go through uh, the course guidelines and look at how much they are saying you need to spend on a course weekly because uh, they do give you that. They're like okay, two to seven uh, hours per week or like fourteen hours per week, and also sort of you know multiply that by one and a half <laughs> I think that's a bit more accurate uh, presentation of how much work every course uh, requires and uh, I think what you said about watching the lectures online uh, that's a really uh, good advice you can find uh, all of if the lecture is recorded you can find it on Brightspace and there you can watch it and I for myself have also added a Chrome extension that allows me to speed up uh, the recording both helps with a time and also makes it a little bit more faster so you can actually get to the you know uh, you can um, remind yourself of the material um, in a bit more of a fast pace and for me uh, that works a little bit better because uh, of course in a lecture room environment there's a lot of um and m's and you know the pauses for people to um uh, like uh, solve uh, an equation themselves and then there's a back and forth between the lecturer and the students but uh, that's not always helpful when you're uh, just trying to study for the exam so uh, add an extension so you can control the speed of the playback so that uh, kind of helps let's see if we have also by the way feel free to uh, unmute yourselves if you want to talk to us uh, or turn on your camera that's also perfectly fine uh, this session is being recorded so um, just keep that in mind and uh, feel free to ask your questions in the chat as well my colleagues are also there to uh, send the links and also guide you in the chat in the chat <laughs> Pranati is saying spare laptop doesn't mean you have two laptops. <laughs> you could if you have resources, but find a friend in a different course who probably doesn't have an exam at the same point. Yeah, that's true. Because uh, not everyone has like two laptops, especially if you traveled or, um, you know, just uh, um, minimal means. Uh, but yeah, if you if you're living in a student housing and you have a friend who is not uh, doesn't have an exam at the same time, you can uh, borrow their laptop. So. Thank you, Pranati. That's, uh, that's actually very helpful. <laughs> also, um, during some, like at least uh, before, if you really couldn't do the exam at home, let's say for different reasons, you could send an email and you could have, an, like, they had like a special exemption for students to actually come and do the exams on campus. Yeah. So if you had a good reason, then, you know, I think it was two weeks before the exam, you had to send them a mail and they'd arrange like a spot on campus where you can just show up and do the exam, like a regular exam. And yeah. they would provide everything from like the spare paper and invigilator and stuff like that. So you didn't have to do a proper exam. 
if you're also concerned with privacy and stuff like that. So yeah, um, just keep that in mind in case it comes up for you guys. You can always contact the study advisor of your faculty and talk to them if you have um, any requirements. Uh, it's also very helpful for disabled students to talk about what are their needs and what they uh, would like to have for them to have the optimal uh, environment to take the exam. Uh, and yeah, like Shashra said, uh, some students just don't do very well in the online examination, so they can ask to be uh, sat in a room uh, with sufficient distance and wearing a mask and be able to actually do the exam uh, on pen and paper. So that's absolutely an option and you can always contact your study advisor and it's their function to advise you on all the things that you can ask uh, for you to do the best that you can do. So um, uh, what are some of the hangout nice places on campus? Because uh, that's all, that was also one of the questions on Instagram. If we were able to hang out, where would we hang out <laughs> on campus? Although I have to mention that right now it's actually cold and rainy weather because, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's not technically spring yet. It's not going to be for like three months or so. <laughs> so don't come in here expecting, you know, birds chirping and uh, flowers blooming. It's not happening. We might actually have hail this weekend. So <laughs> just to crush uh, your dreams <laughs> of having a lovely <laughs> Dutch spring, it's not happening. So what are some of your, uh, you know, in the before times, where did you used to hang out on campus? Um, well, I have to be honest, I, I used to hang out in the library. <laughs> 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 but that's just me. Um, but I have to say, it's a beautiful library to hang yeah. out in. Yeah, you know, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if, if there is uh, good weather, you can go and talk to the library and have lunch over there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a very nice cafe at the library they've also added i don't know if it's still there or not but um before we were um we went into lockdown and uh, they've added some uh, very high-tech vending machines uh, to the library uh, ground floor that also gives you hot food which was like um, such a thing i loved it <laughs> Yeah. It would give you like pasta and like uh, small pizzas and like uh, rice and chicken, like things like that. It's like um, it's kind of like airplane <laughs> food, but it warms it for you and it uh, gives it out. Like you know, the experience was nice. <laughs> That's yeah, gone. That's gone. That's gone. Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I think now they are vending uh, highlighters, pens, no to so. They have one uh, vending machine for that. Okay, well, they now have the boring vending machines with the, <laughs> with the hand sanitizers. <laughs> but there are uh, places to, in each faculty, uh, there are, um, there is like a small cafe, but they're not always open. Um, so uh, especially now at the first two weeks of February, which is technically a holiday, and not a lot of cafes would be open on campus. Uh, but after that, each faculty does have their own uh, cafe slash bar area, and also they have a cafeteria for um, food, but there are also bigger cafes throughout the campus. One of them is uh, next to the industrial design faculty and is also uh, is a place where you could also go to check out if you can um, uh, rent a bicycle. So uh, it's in that region and in the first floor of Pulse building, um, which is also next to uh, industrial design. Faculty, there are also a lot of uh, different vendors who are selling very delicious food. And there's also, of course, uh, the Aula building, um, which is, uh, I think, is also one of those uh, protected buildings because uh, because of design reasons, <laughs> which is the conference center. And uh, it also has a restaurant, a cafeteria and a cafe slash bar. And the library, of course, also has a cafe and it's a very nice place to like go to and study and hang out. It looks like a, a upside down uh, ice cream cone. So <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's very nice. And uh, you can actually see it and the uh, picture behind Mario, my colleague. Uh, you can see that's what the library looks like. And when the weather is nice, people hang out on the roof of the library and have picnics and just take their snacks there and uh, 
Hangout is a very good place. And uh, the architecture faculty um, has a bar, uh, still has, but uh, it hasn't been open for a long time because uh, of the regulations uh, with regards to COVID. But that was also such a place to, you know, uh, go there for like a, a little something after a full day of studying and uh, doing uh, teamwork. Yeah, it's open on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I think. Yeah, it was open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Also, um, X X has really good food. Ah, yes, X, uh, formerly known as the Sports and Culture Center, X uh, has good food, and you can also after your um, uh, workout, you can go there to the restaurant and have food and hang out, and uh, that's also a very nice place. And it is uh, newly renovated, and it looks amazing. I think uh, they did a very good job with like the whole um, design of the place. It looks uh, quite nice. Uh, there's a question about bikes. Um, uh, uh, Vittorio is asking, uh, do you recommend buying a secondhand uh, bike or go through a rental service, which also covers repairs, etc.? I'd say buy a bike. Like personally, I, I understand. Okay, it depends on if you're an exchange student and you're going to stay here for like, let's say, three to six months, it makes sense to rent a bike. Because at least the nice thing that comes with renting a bike is uh, in case you're not handy, they do come and repair your bike. In case of theft, they do come and replace it. So any small problem you have with the bike, there's someone there to fix it for you. But if you're planning on staying long term, even a year, buy a, I'd recommend buying a bike. Like on Facebook Marketplace, you find okay, a good bike you can get for 60 euros. And there's the plenty of options. So you can get from like a city bike to a mountain bike to like a mm -hmm. race bike. And it, especially if you're planning on staying here for a while, it it is handy to learn a few things, you know, like how to fix a puncture or <laughs> how to put back your chain and stuff like that. So I personally would recommend buying it. Like I bought a bike and I've had it for three years now and mm. I've had no issues with it. And if you are staying for a short time, like three to six months, it, it does absolutely make sense to have uh, to go with one of the rental services. Um, um, like Mario says in the chat, Swapfits is a good company to rent a bike and they are quite affordable and it really does make sense uh, to go with them. It's a good bike. Um, it's very simple city bike. Uh, usually with the um, uh, pedal brakes. Um, not everyone is comfortable with the pedal brakes, uh, so look for something that you feel comfortable with. Uh, but yeah, uh, really depends on how long you're staying. Uh, but if you're staying longer, uh, like Shashru said, um, you can check. Students are always the buying and selling their used bikes, so you will definitely find something that fits you. Sebastian, uh, what about you? Yeah, there are some... Uh private resellers, so companies that buy and sell bikes that usually mm -hmm. uh, employ some people to uh, teach them how to prepare bikes. Mm -hmm. And they sell, resell them for a very affordable price. Um, uh, well, there are, I think there are a couple here in, in Delft. Uh, one of them was where I got my bike. Uh, and yeah, you can find their pretty cheap, cheap bikes for, well, between 70 and 100 euros and you yeah. can resell it for similar prices mm -hmm. i would actually say yeah around that uh, price range i think um kind of around the 90 hundred uh, price you can get a pretty good bike if you do go a bit cheaper like you know you also <laughs> risk that <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> chains are gonna fall off and you might have a puncture soon so you know um just uh when you're buying the bike just check it for um, different uh, aspects of it, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, just uh, if you pay a little bit more, then you get a, a little bit of better bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, with uh, swap feeds, uh, just make sure, like I've heard this happen a lot, especially when you get your bike for the first time, make sure you, I don't know, stick a sticker or something on it. Ah, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> on campus, there are plenty of swap feeds and with respect of what color you pick, there are probably like 50 bikes around you that match the color. So unless you have a couple of hours to try figuring out which one is your bike, what I, yeah, uh, a sticker would do. And also just make sure you have a good lock in respect of you rent a bike or you buy a bike. Don't uh, skimp out on the lock because, you no. know, a hundred euro bike with a 10 euro lock is... You are going to lose out. it. <laughs> 
Actually, one of the one of the things that uh, Dutch students do uh, it's a, an activity that they do during their introduction week uh, that everyone gets a bike and then they kind of uh, ruin it in a sense uh, by like uh, painting it in a very uh, bright color or like different colors and they try to make it look a bit shabby than it is because then it kind of deters. Uh, the thieves from stealing your bike but yeah if you get a swap bits uh, all of the swap bits bikes uh, they have the same color and uh, model so you want want to you know uh, add uh, some stickers or something so you can find your bike more easily especially if you're coming back from the library at 12 uh, at night <laughs> then you don't want to look for your bike for like uh, 20 minutes <laughs> or if it is snowing that's also or if it's snowing yeah yeah, yeah. exactly Oh, oh, yeah, I'm forgetting it's snowing. You have to be careful when uh, uh, biking while it snows or when mm. it's already a little bit slippery. Uh, well, well, when the ground is already a little bit slippery because I've seen many people falling uh, yeah. like that. Um, I mean, speaking of falling, uh, if you have a medical emergency, what are you supposed to do? Um. <laughs> Do you want to go ahead? <laughs> first of all, well, first of all, when you arrive here, you want to register at a general practitioner. Um, the university also, I think Mario will uh, post a link about it, but university also has doctors and um, very small medical center uh, on the campus as well. So you want to register at a general practitioner. And um, if something happens to you and you require medical help, if it's immediate medical help and you're on campus, there is a number that you can call. Uh, and it is actually recommended that you call that number before calling 112, which is the emergency number in the Netherlands, because uh, we have an on-campus emergency uh, service and they will get to you much faster uh, than the um, uh, national uh emergency services so call uh, the campus um, uh, number first and then you can call 112 that's for something if uh, a sudden emergency happens you fell from your bike you feel pain you hit your head or something happened and you require immediate assistance uh, if not then you should contact your general practitioner and follow their instructions and uh, also, if you happen to be near a medical center or a hospital, you can also go to the emergency uh, uh, services there. But of course, again, because of the COVID rules, uh, please follow uh, the recommendations, for example, wearing a face mask and uh, maintaining distance uh, between you and other people. And again, welcome to everyone who joined us uh, just now. Uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the chat or you can unmute yourself or also turn on your camera. That is perfectly fine as well. Uh, this session will be recorded, so don't worry if you missed out on the information that was shared uh, earlier. Uh, it will be on our YouTube channel, so no worries. I hear someone turning on their camera, uh, their microphone. Hi, hello. Or was that a mistake and I put you on the spot? No. <laughs> okay, uh, so we'll keep going. Uh, yeah, that was about uh, medical emergencies. Uh, did you guys have to, you know, go to the hospital for something? <laughs> uh, yes, now that you said it, like, uh, I think <laughs> I went in the... Uh, well, I had... Uh, I, I, it was doing an IP, actually, that I went to the emergency, but it was oh. not IP related, it was other thing. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember, well, it was on 2020, July, but mm -hmm. they told me that I should call uh, the hospital before going to the emergency part. Mm -hmm. But that was on 2020. It might have changed. I don't know. I haven't yeah. been there be uh, after that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, uh, that was my experience. I think I've been also some other times to the general practitioner. Mm -hmm. And um, also, well, they uh, the insurance usually also covers like well the universe insurance that the university recommends covers uh, medical attention in other countries. I actually yeah. went to the hospital in Spain uh, when I was aware of this uh, some weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> With your student insurance, actually, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in okay. the Netherlands, we have a special. Yeah, situation 
if you are ill or, or have something that you think you need to go to the hospital, you first need to go to your general practitioner. And then you get a, a letter that you can go to a specialist in the hospital. Yeah. And what uh, Sebastian was telling about the uh, first aid or the, 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 or the emergency room, uh, that's for emergencies. But if you are ill in the weekend, when the general practitioner is not there or in the evenings, uh, there's a special doctor's post also located in the hospital, but not from the hospital itself. And there you need to call if you can see the general practitioner of that uh, special uh, opening hours and go there. So basically always call <laughs> before going. <laughs> Uh, Timon is asking, any tips for any cool and easy courses to take? There is no such thing as an easy course. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of cool courses. Um, yeah. I think actually um, in the uh, aerospace <laughs> faculty, tell us, uh, give us uh, the... <laughs> yeah, well, you, 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 it's not your lucky day, I think, because <laughs> there are no easy courses in aerospace. I would, I would ask Sebastian, especially about easy courses, guys, if you want well, to yeah. answer cool, courses. You know. Timo yeah. says easy and cool. Mechanical oh, no, actually, Timo says with emphasis on easy. <laughs> okay. Um, also, one, one advice that, um, that I have for that is that you might um, want to check if you can uh, take Dutch courses and use them as, um, uh, or, well, extra they, credits? Yes, as extra credits, mm. if they can count. Um, so that's. Well, I wouldn't say it's easy because it requires like 10 hours a week to work, to do actual work. But, well, it's cool and it's fun to <laughs> finally uh, get to know what people are talking around you. <laughs> and well, I can language. I can actually, um, you know, plug my faculty, the engineering and uh, uh, the, oh my God, TPM. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my faculty TBM has a lot of interesting uh, ethics and environmental related courses and that I would actually recommend. Um, I, I don't think they're necessarily easy, um, but they are kind of different from uh, the regular uh, specialized engineering courses that you might take, but extremely helpful. It's uh, nice to have, a, as an engineer, to have a more, um, be familiar with the ethical views uh, in different fields that you might be working at. So, uh, oh, actually, um, someone asked how intense is the Dutch elementary course? Um, I wouldn't say it is intense. Um, the university uses uh, their own method. They call it the DEFT method uh, for uh, teaching Dutch. And the principal method is that they are trying to teach Dutch as a child would learn it. So there's a lot of emphasis on conversation and uh, uh, listening. Um, so. I would say it's an enjoyable course to take, um, but it also does require work. Not as much as any of the engineering courses, but, um, uh, you know, uh, it still has, uh, you have to spend some time per week uh, on the courses. And uh, you actually take um, one lesson and then give an exam before you're allowed to continue taking the elementary courses. So they also want to know if you're serious about learning. <laughs> <laughs> and they also have uh, the language courses uh, we also have for French and Spanish. So um, if you are yourself Dutch and don't want to, um, you know, take the Dutch elementary courses, then you can take other language courses. And also, of course, English, if you want to improve your writing skills or uh, just generally brush up on uh, some of your English speaking skills, that's, uh, that would be great. Yeah, for Michael, it's even easier than for other languages because he's German. Oh, yes. Yeah. The yeah. German if, language if you're German, and the Dutch language. Very easy to learn uh, to learn Dutch. <laughs> yeah. You would be the best in class and everybody would envy you. <laughs> <laughs> so it would not be intense for you uh, if your uh, mother tongue is actually German. Ah, Timon says that uh, you actually took one of the philosophy and ethics courses. Yeah. So uh, you're familiar with what I was saying. The philosophy and ethics courses at TBM are quite uh, cool and fun to do and easy and something different. So it also um, exercises your mind in a different way uh, that you might uh, get daily. Um, also, just be aware when you're signing up for electives, you might be tempted to, you know, find courses which don't have exams and just have assignments. 
<laughs> just um, thoroughly read what it says, like what the workload is, because I know some courses where, which don't have exam, especially in aerospace engineering, which just have assignments and uh, people regret taking them towards the end. <laughs> so I don't know if you like exams or if you like assignments more, just uh, make sure you actually read that part of the study guide before you select a course. Yeah, and I would tentatively say it's also very much allowed to sign up for a course and uh, basically not participate just because you want to have access to the material. That's possible. Um, but if you do sign up for a course and you, um, you know, make a commitment to do uh, the group work and uh, be mindful of your group mates uh, as well, because for some of them that might not be an elective course. And then, you know, it becomes a bit of a tension because they actually need to pass the course because it's part of, part of their curriculum. But for you, it's a fun, cool elective. And, you know, you want to be upfront about that. But it's also very much possible you just want to enroll in a course on Brightspace and you don't want to follow it. That's completely fine. You, uh, you know, no one uh, would make you to go to an exam of a course. You just won't get the credit for it, but uh, you can have access to the material and just study it on your own uh, terms. Uh, and oh, uh, I also got a question about whether uh, the sports courses count as an elective and no, <laughs> they do not. <laughs> so the sport is just, you know, for leisure and uh, for uh, your free time. Uh, you can enjoy all the uh, different cultural and uh, crafts and uh, sport courses that are offered at uh, X. Um, so you have to get a, a subscription at X and uh, with that you can participate in a lot of different courses, but some of the uh, craft courses like photography and fabric um, uh, design and uh, I think they also have a pottery lessons and uh, filmography. Things like that, I think for that you need to pay extra as well. But uh, a lot of uh, sports courses are available just with the regular subscription at X. Uh, where you can uh, what's the sports courses and um, there are a lot of different ones martial arts um, um, tennis related courses and all of that you can find information on the x website i think mario will post the link on the chat uh, and x is the name of the sports and culture hub of uh, tu delft so there you can um, go through their menu and based on your interest find uh, whatever courses you would like to take Yes, Pranati uh, posted it on chat. Uh, did you used to go? I, I think Shashu, you used to go to the gym, right? At the X or yeah, Sebastian? Both of us <laughs> used to. <laughs> <laughs> when it was open, because there's also a pretty good gym uh, uh, at the at the X when it was open. So you used to go? It is, it is, it is. Like, uh, I just started going again yesterday. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's nice. open again, but... Uh, you still have to sign up like initially back before COVID you could just walk into any given time between like mm -hmm. 7 a.m and 11 p.m but um now after you get the sports subscription you also need to get the fitness subscription like the fitness supplement on top of it mm -hmm. and uh on the same side and could you, you tell us how much that is uh, do you know off the top of your head 113 plus i think together it comes to like 230 or 240 euros and every year they tend to increase it up a bit and that is um, for a full academic year yeah, for the full, like, okay. Also, if you're uh, staying for a shorter duration, you can buy six month subscription, like half year subscription, mm -hmm. I think one month, one week. I also think one day. Oh, but okay. um, <laughs> if you're, if you're going to stay for six months, I'd recommend getting a six month one because it comes cheaper. Mm. Uh, also, if you're not planning on going to the gym, don't get the fitness supplement because it's an additional 130 euros. So if you're just doing sports, let's say you want to try martial arts or you want to play football or something, just get the sports mm. subscription. Yeah. And for the German, you also have to sign up for sports because I think there are 35 sports right now for, mm -hmm. per session. And uh, yeah, you can only book three. At any given time, you can only have three sessions booked. And if you don't show up, okay, that's another thing. If you sign up for any of the classes with limited uh, sports, and if you don't show up, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Seb, uh, you have three. If you, I think if you miss three sessions within a span of 60 days, you get banned for a week from signing yeah. up for any of the courses. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. because yeah, so. uh, at the moment um, there are limited spots because they have to keep the number of people down uh, in the inside areas. So if you do sign up for a day that you said you would go and you don't go for three consecutive sessions, then you will be banned for a week for um, booking any more sessions because they just want to give it to the people who uh, would really go <laughs> and take the spots. So. And uh, for the gym, I think it's up to half an hour before the session, you can cancel the session. So it's like the moment, let's say, for an 8 o'clock session, after 7.30, you can't cancel it. So, <laughs> yeah, true. You know, um, like, uh, sometimes it would get full, like for the 7 a.m. session, that uh, that's usually where I go. Mm. And I would wake up like 6.15, 6.30. Uh, the early to, risers. <laughs> <laughs> to, to see who people, uh, we, um, to, to look for an empty spot at that time. You usually find and I think they also started the spinning classes back up, which is really popular. And a lot of people would like to go to the spinning classes or um, they also have uh, group workouts with different things like Zumba or um, uh, other group Power. workouts. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, what is the name of that other one? Pilates? Uh, Pilates? <laughs> that also they have, but they have instructors uh, who would, uh, you know, uh, help you and uh, they are guiding the sessions and it's a uh, quite intensive workout. It's pretty good. And those you can go to without paying an extra fee. So uh, it really depends on what you're interested in. Um, also for some of the classes, um, like for example, body power, you can only sign up from like the same day at like, I think at 1 mm -hmm. p.m. Yeah. The registration opens so like within a minute all the spots are taken so <laughs> i don't know have your phone open have your laptop open and just hit refresh at like 1 p.m and also just be mindful especially if you're joining let's say a martial art class uh just always check what level the class is at because mm. okay if you're a beginner and you join an advanced level you will get your ass kicked so yeah don't and also there are actual mindfulness classes, which I highly recommend <laughs> yoga and mindfulness, and they don't have a level. So um, you can go if you're a beginner who doesn't know how to breathe, and you can also go if you can float in the air. So, you know, it's uh, it's open to everyone. <laughs> and I also highly recommend that uh, for this period of time. It's uh, very helpful. I think currently or during the lockdown, they were also doing online sessions of uh, some of these uh, courses. So you should just check the website and see what is available to do in person, what is online. There are also nutritionists uh, available at DX. So if you have any questions about um, how you want to eat or um, you're just curious about your body, um, it's uh, open to the students and you can book a session and talk to a nutritionist at X. Yeah, just be careful. I think each day you have either like a psychologist, a counselor, mm -hmm. and then like a nutritionist, just make sure you're walking in to a room at the right, you know, when it's the right time. <laughs> Because I once by mistake walked in, I think, to a counselor and kept complaining about my shoulders. And like five minutes later, she told me that she was the counselor. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was awkward. Although, you know, it might be all in your head. So, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Um, so yeah, they also have uh, counseling uh, at the X, and there's also counseling career and counseling services available at uh, ASA, which is the Education and the Student Affairs um, Office, which we are also, uh, as the introduction program, part of that whole office. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of uh, counseling services available at uh, TU Delft, and you can easily find that. And if you need help, uh, there is always someone to help you. And again, you can also always contact the study advisors and your faculty. And if you have questions further about um, uh, your, you know, uh, mental state uh, and you need further help, they can also guide you to who to go to. Uh, or, you know, if you have plans for your career and you need a little bit of professional help, uh, that's also available uh, at ASA and uh, you can contact the career professionals and they can help you figure out uh, all the awesome things you want to do for your future. And there's also, um, uh, I forgot their name, Delft Plus. Um, what is the um, uh, entrepreneurship center? Oh, just Delft, you mean? Yes, Delft, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, Delft is also a center that helps uh, people who have um, some uh, entrepreneurship uh, ambitions uh, and would like to start their own company or want to get involved in uh, uh, other startups. So you can contact them. Uh, that is also available to you. 
Okay. What else? Please feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question or type it in the chat. Um, we will be here for another 10 minutes. So feel free to ask all of your questions. Oh, uh, with regards to public transport, um, uh, as a um, you can actually buy uh, different kinds of uh, forms of discounts, uh, depending on uh, how much you want to travel between different cities or um, uh, within one city. Uh, there is a um, discount program uh, that costs about 50 euros, uh, I think 55 ish euros uh, now per year, and that gives you 40% discount on your train fares uh, either during the week or on the weekend. So you can choose. Um, and for people who would like to travel around, I think it's a very good deal and um, you can um, get it for the weekends or for uh, during the week, depending on your own schedule. So um, that's something to look uh, forward to. Uh, it might be a bit difficult to book that yourself if you don't speak Dutch. Um, of course, you can always use um, Google Translate, uh, but um, find a, a Dutch classmate and uh, they can help you <laughs> get one of these, um, what is called OV chip card. Um, and it's the chip card that works with all of public transport throughout Netherlands. So um, just uh, try to get some help uh, from somebody who speaks Dutch, uh, or you can also just power through uh, the website yourself. It's not that complicated, but at the beginning, it looks a bit, um, uh, might seem a bit confusing because they have a lot of services and different kinds of uh, discount programs. So um, don't be intimidated, but also don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, also, uh, yeah. also with the OV chip card, you can get uh, uh, the possibility of renting bikes in different stations, which yeah. is very handy. Like if you want to have a day, for example, to any uh, Dutch city, small Dutch city, you can over there rent a bike. Yeah, and I think it's three seventy five per day or something like that. It's not yeah. expensive at all. So it's possible to uh, those uh, bicycles are for rent from uh, the NS, uh, which is a company that runs the trains here in Netherlands. So, for example, if you wanted to spend a day in Kokenhof and uh, cycle around the tulip fields, you can uh, get the train, go to Leiden and from Leiden you can uh, rent a bike from NS and then just spend the day uh, cycling around and look at beautiful colors and countryside uh, filled with flowers. So. <laughs> It makes for a really enjoyable day. <laughs> so in these uh, um, last minutes, what pearl of wisdom do you have to share? <laughs> uh, uh, Victoria is asking about the name of the bikes, bike uh, renting at station. It's called Ove Fits, which you would see uh, when you, if you buy the subscription of the Ove chip card. <laughs> Yeah, true. And Pranati says, if you're ambitious enough, she knows some people who have cycled to Kokonov. <laughs> yeah, true. It's also possible to um, rent an electric bike. Um, uh, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, costs a little bit more. But if you want to cycle uh, further, uh, that you can also do that. So, And Mario typed the name of the uh, OVE bikes. Um, also, if you don't feel like cycling and you still want to have the riding experience, I'd highly recommend the electric scooters, mm. especially if you have a license. It's I, like I shop with it. So like I know how my groceries are and everything. It's really convenient. You have scooters all around the place as well. And it's not that expensive. I think it's 30 cents per minute. Mm. And how can you rent those? Uh, initially, I think, I think for most of the app, you have to download the app and then, you know, give your details, your license and everything. Mm -hmm. And at any point, you know, you just look up where you are and then see which all scooters are in the neighborhood. Mm. Reserve one, just go there, unlock it and then drive and then just stop. Just make sure your phone is charged. If your phone is, you know, on the verge of dying, don't do it. <laughs> you, might, you might end up with, you know, like a huge invoice by the end of the night. <laughs> yeah, because you have to bring them back to a station at the end of the day, uh, right? No, no, no. You can actually, at least the uh, scooters that I'm talking about, you can drop them anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like you, uh, at least on the map on the app, you can actually see like different zones mm -hmm. where you can park them. 
And now, like, it's been a couple of months since they've been around. So now the, like, the zones have increased. Mm-hmm. So you could essentially park them anywhere you would like. And I think, like, okay, it's called Felix here in Delft. You also mm-hmm. have it in Rotterdam and The Hague. It's just in The Hague and Rotterdam, I think you might also have different names for the scooter, but it's essentially the same service. And that's a different private company. That's not with the public transport. The one in Delft, I think, is with the private company, but the same scooters you get in The Hague, which is by HTM. So it's ah, uh, okay. HDM is another company that uh, uh, runs the buses in Den Haag. It's a public transport company. Yeah. But yeah, there are different, a lot of different options to get around. And uh, if you have no interest in bikes and no interest in the scooters or anything else, you can also always rely on trains, trams, buses, metro. And uh, that will get you quite to the very close vicinity of whichever point on the map you would like to go. And there are also uh, day tickets if you want to travel much further, like you want to go somewhere in a, like Maastricht or uh, to north to Groningen, you can also get day tickets. And uh, that costs less than if you were to um, buy the ticket from point to point. So that's also something to get into account. If you want to just make a day travel to Maastricht and back, uh, then it's worth to buy one of the day tickets instead of uh, paying for the routes that you're taking also it's uh, it might be cheaper if you do a you know uh, travel by a group so if you i think i don't know if it's mm. 10 people or so mm-hmm. it, you get a discount as well and or if yeah. you're traveling with a dutch student who has the the free transportation during the week or weekend if you travel with them you do get a 40 percent discount yeah on the same they can journey, also so. basically give you a 40 percent discount because mm-hmm. you're traveling together so it uh, it helps to have friends <laughs> <laughs> Helps with your mental health and also helps you financially. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, anything else? Any uh, last things you would like to add? If anyone has any last questions, we will be gone in five minutes. So feel free to ask. Uh, Shashrut, Sebastian, last words. Ah, Michael Mm -hmm. asks, any app recommendations? Uh, Oh, buy and rather, definitely. Fast and Radar, yeah, uh, it's an app that uh, gives you a pretty accurate uh, prediction of the weather. So uh, Bass and Radar, yeah, you you definitely need that one. <laughs> For me, it's nine to nine to traveling. It really helps. Oh, ninety two, ninety two. Ninety two, yeah. ninety two, yeah. That gives you what uh, the number of uh, buses or which trains you have to get uh, if you type in the address you want to get to and where you currently are. Um, someone asked, uh, do we have any Adobe discount as two Delphi students? No, unless you actually work with an introduction program, for example, you don't know, <laughs> get a discount. But um, I think there are general... some softwares that you can get a discount on um, if you're two Delphi students. But uh, you can actually check the list of the softwares available on Brightspace. And there you can see what softwares you can download and get a discount on. Oh, no, but this ah. is free. The software, uh, the software on Brightspace depending on which faculty you're from, are free. You Mm. just have to use, uh, you know, you probably have to log in with your student ID. But uh, in general, for the Adobe suite, uh, you get a discount. Like, you can apply for the general student discount using an email ID. So when you create an Adobe account, you have to use your tutor student email ID. And then I think it's 119 euros a year for the whole suite. Yeah. So you do get a discount. Yeah, but just it's not. But just free. a general student uh, discount, not the specifically yeah. for TU Delft. But uh, TU has like the other softwares uh, that are there for free on Brightspace that you can uh, use. Uh, and those and that software varies uh, from faculty to faculty. So, for mm-hmm. example, your friends from aerospace won't have the same as you from mechanical engineering. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Anything else? Ah, uh, Pranati says uh, Splitwise, um, which is basically kind of the Venmo uh, Dutch (laughs) that helps you um, split uh, bills. Uh, If you go out with friends, which, um, you know, uh, hasn't happened in a while, but if it is possible to go out for um, having dinner or buying something with your friends, then uh, you can just add the number of people and your costs and it would split it amongst uh, 
the people based on the criteria like it could be split <laughs> equally or based on how much everybody had uh, stuff like that and it uh, takes out the headache of you know taking out calculators and trying to figure out how much anyone has to pay <laughs> so it is the split wise and there's also the tiki that a lot of people use that works with WhatsApp. You can just uh, ticky someone and um, if they owe you money and they will pay it back. Uh, also, Picnic, in case you don't feel like shopping and like are going to the supermarket, you can always order through Picnic. So it's like an mm, online that's true. supermarket. Yeah, that's a specific online supermarket uh, that delivers. But uh, if you uh, buy uh, more than 50 euros worth of groceries, uh, the other um, grocery stores also deliver. At least Albertang does, uh, which is the name of one of the biggest grocery chains uh, in the Netherlands. <laughs> But, you know, as a student, you might not to buy like 50 euros worth of groceries at once. So <laughs> that's something. Uh, but there are um, um, basically all grocery store chains have uh, a branch in Delft, have multiple ones. Albertine does, Yombo does. Um, there is a Derek and uh, there's Aldi. So um, I don't think you will be uh, anywhere you live in Delft, you will be close to uh, some of them. Lidl, which uh, I personally recommend, they have fresh fruits uh, yes. and vegetables <laughs> and in very good prices. So I recommend Lidl. Uh, I think that's the top one for me, at least uh, amongst all the other ones. Same. Lidl, like, it might not have as many options as the other stores do, but whatever they do have is really good. And yeah. like, Especially, Especially fruit, vegetables, the greens, ugly. they are the best, uh, the best quality and the lowest prices. But I would say snack variety, Albertine beats the other yes. ones because yes, there's yes. also um, in Bonus. the um, close to a lot of the um, uh, big student housing buildings, there's an Albertine XL, um, Albertine XXL, and they have like a very good variety of snacks. So. <laughs> Oh, and this is not a sponsored, by the way. <laughs> this is not a sponsored concert, uh, content. So, uh, you know, fruit and vegetables, little snacks, overtime. <laughs> um, okay, so I think if uh, you guys don't have anything extra to add, that should be it. Yes, everyone good? <laughs> okay, thank you so much everyone for joining in. And thank you Shashra, thank you Sebastian, thank you Mario and Pranati. And we will be seeing you again for another uh, live session next week on Thursday uh, at 2.30. We will put the a link for the live stream. Uh, of course, we will share it on our social media. And you can also watch the recording of this session on our YouTube channel. So, you know, uh, like and subscribe and follow us on social media. Mm -hmm. And we will also be in contact with you about the details of introduction program. If you haven't registered for uh, the program yet, please do so. You should uh, find the emails in your inbox. And we uh, hope to see you during our program. <laughs>